Hello and welcome to the Calculator Guy video on finding the critical region for normal distribution hypothesis testing on a Casio FX CG50. Let's take a look at the first question. A sample of size 30 is taken from a normal distribution and we've got a normal distribution there with a mean of mu and a variance of 1.8 squared. This distribution is used to test the hypothesis where we've got an H naught, so a null hypothesis, that the mean equals 40, and we're testing it against H1, an alternative hypothesis that mu does not equal 40 at the 1% significance level. So for part A, we've got to find the critical region for the test statistic. And then for part B, after having found that the sample has a mean of 39.7, we've got a comment on the observation making reference to the answer from part A. So the, for the first part of the question, then we need to find the critical region for the test statistic. Now we need to think about the distribution for the sample that we have here. So essentially the sample distribution, we can assume that that is also going to be normally distributed and that the mean, well, the mean that we're testing or the mean that we're assuming is correct there is 40. And then we want a sample variance then, which should be 1.8 squared over the sample size, which is 30. So this will be our sample distribution that we're going to be using in the calculator. Now let's find the critical region. So for this, we need to go to statistics mode. And just ignore the data that I've got here. This is just from a previous calculation that I was doing. It doesn't matter if you've got this completely blank. All you need to do is to press a distribution here. So that's F5 for dist. And then we want F1 for norm. And then what we need uh, for to find the critical region is to have the inverse normal. So that's F3. And then because we've got variables that we can input from our sample distribution, then we want to press F2 for var to input the variables. OK, so we've got our screen here where we need to input information from the question. And now tail, what we've got to have a think about here is what type of test that we've got involved here. Well, the alternative hypothesis says H1 mu does not equal 40. Well, that is a two tailed test. So the suggestion that maybe mu is higher or lower than 40. And if we're, we're testing it at the 1% significance level, that means essentially we've got 1% to share between both the upper and lower tail, 0.5% in each. And the central region in between that will be 99%. So 99% with 0.5% in either tail. We can put it so that we're concentrating on the central area. So if we navigate down to tail, you can see that F3, we can focus in on the central region. F3, now how big do we want that? Let's scroll down to area. We want that to cover 99% of the distribution. Well, in decimal, that's going to be 0 0.99. So we want an area of 0 0.99. So then we've got our sigma and be very careful here because what we want to do is to input our sigma from the sample distribution here. So it's not going to be just 1.8. What we need to do is to take the square root of the sample variance. So that's going to be 1.8 over the square root of our sample size. So 1.8 over the square root of 30. And when we press execute here, it will just change it to display a decimal approximation for us. And mu from our sample distribution, well, we're saying that that is 40. So we've got a mu of 40. And then we've got save result. We're not particularly bothered about saving it. We're just going to write these down as part of our answer. So just press execute at this point. And you can see that we've got two results from this. Well, these are the critical values for where our critical regions start and end. So you can see that the lower of the two there, 39.15, let's give it to two decimal places. Well, anything that's less than that will be in that lower tail, the 0.5% at the bottom of the distribution. And then the upper value that we've got there, 40.85 to two decimal places, that's going to be the start of the upper tail. So anything greater than that value is going to be in the 0.5% at the top of the distribution. So essentially our critical region 
for the test statistic is going to be any values that are less than 39.15 and any values that are greater than 40.85 and that's our answer for part a so for part b we're given a little bit more information then so the sample is found to have a mean of 39.7 what we need to do is to comment on the observation making reference to your answer from part A. So part A essentially means we know where the critical region for the test statistic is. And we're thinking about 39.7. Well, let's just compare it to the region that we've got. 39.7 is, well, it's greater than the lower boundary, 39.15. It's less than the upper boundary. 40.85 which means it falls within the 99 percent region in the center of the distribution so if that's the case then there's going to be insufficient evidence for us to reject h naught so essentially our conclusion there the the comment that we're making is the mean of 39.7 shows that there is insufficient evidence for us to reject h naught and therefore we can accept that uh, mu equals 40. Let's take a look at a second type of question that we might be asked here. A sample of size 20 is taken from a normal distribution where it's normally distributed with a mean of mu and a variance of 5.5 squared, and it's found to have a sample mean of 18.1. And the sample is used to test, and we've got a null hypothesis H0 of mu equaling 20 against our alternative hypothesis H1 that mu is less than 20. So we can see there that we're going to have a one-tailed test in this particular question. And we're testing at the 10% significance level. And we've got to state the result of the hypothesis test. Now, there's going to be two ways I'm going to show you how you can approach this question. The first way is going to be very similar to what we've just done, finding the critical region and then testing our sample mean against that. And the second one is working with the probability and testing that against the 10%. So let's have a look at the first way of doing this it's again finding the critical region so i'm just going to press ac from here just to go back to the input screen we want the same setup here we want to input the variables from our sample distribution now remember with the sample distribution here we're assuming that the mean is the mean from our null hypothesis so we've got a mean of 20 and then for the variance there we've got 5.5 squared over the sample size of 20. So this is the information that we're going to be inputting into the calculator. The first thing we want to alter is the tail. Now remember that we're doing a one tail test here and we're interested in less than. So that's going to be the left tail of the distribution. And here we are focusing on the size of the region that we want. We, we want that left tail to be 10% so it's the 10 percent level so we want that left tail to be 0.1 in area so we're going to input the area as 0.1 and then here our sigma remember that's a sigma from our sample distribution it's 5.5 over the square root of 20. So be careful there not just 5.5 5.5 over root 20 and again once you press to execute it will just display that as a decimal and our mu we're going to change that to 20 from our sample distribution again we're not particularly bothered about saving the result to use that any further so let's just press execute and here we've got our critical value so we've got 18.42 to two decimal places so what we know is that any result for the mean that is below 18.42 is going to be inside the critical region and therefore there'd be sufficient evidence to reject h naught so let's test that against the sample mean that we're given we're given 18.1 and that is less than 18.42 our critical value there so there is sufficient evidence to reject h naught here in favor of the alternative hypothesis the mean is going to be less than 20 let's take a look at the second method that we can approach this with and this is going to involve us switching modes here again just ignore the uh, information that's stored in here we're just going to exit out of here back to distribution then normal and this time we want ncd normal cumulative distribution 
and once again we, we've got variable all set up now here we actually do have values that are going to be reused if you notice the sigma and the mu are the same as what we just inputted there for when we were finding the critical region so we can just leave those as they are if you're not 100 percent sure that you've got the same result if you've maybe been doing a few of these questions in one go you might wish to re-input them but uh, I'm just going to leave them there. They are correct for what we need to use for uh, to find the probability of uh, getting a result of 18.1 or less. So we're looking for the probability of 18.1 or less. So we want a lower limit. Well, we want a lower limit of as low as you can go. So I'm going to input minus 9 times 10 to the 99. We want a very low figure here as our lowest value and then our upper value is going to be anything up to 18.1 so we're going to have an upper value of 18.1 again sigma and mu are the same we're not going to save the result so we're just going to press execute and what we're just focusing in on here from the result is p p equals 0 0.061 um, so if we were to convert that to a percentage that's 6.1 percent and if we think about it, that is less than 10% that we're testing it against. So the significance level is 10%. We've got uh, a result for 18.1 or less, probability of 6.1. So that is smaller than our 10%, which again would mean there's sufficient evidence for us to reject H0 in favour of H1. Again, we'd expect the result to be the same both times in terms of our observation. So both of them give that same conclusion that um, we've got to reject H0 in favour of H1. So there we go, two ways in which we can use the information from the calculator to test our sample means, but mainly concentrating on finding the critical region. You may be asked to do that as part of the question. Alternatively, it is part of a method to answer the question anyway, but if you're given free choice, you can also test against the significance level with the probability as well if you prefer. Don't forget to like and subscribe for future videos, but that's it for this video. Thank you very much for watching and I shall see you next time on The Calculator Guide.